junior pumps. No. In this quiet moment, pay homage to your practice, pay homage to the root teacher, a tragedy. Raise your hands, raise your head, and open your eyes. Now, stretch your legs. And take the rugs. Take this pose first with the knees joined, feet joined. So, knees joined, feet joined, and you sit, if necessary, with a blanket, but if possible, you sit straight down. This depends, of course, on knees, ankles, hips. So this we call Vajrasana. Vajra means thunderbolt. Stroke of that energy. Now, <clears throat> keep your toes touching. Oh, and stretch your shins forward looks like looks like this there should be a sense of physical elongation of that shin bone i'm pulling with two hands pulling forward to move the shin toward the knee and do both sides equally maybe do them twice if need be get longer and sit and stretch the shin actively back to the toes. Then take your knees apart. So from the cat's doing something with power cords and your heels go from Adho Mukha Virasana, stretch forward. <laughs> Stop the cat. <laughs> Stretch your ribs forward. Don't take the knees super wide. Keep them wide enough that the side inner thigh supports the side ribs. If you were to slip down in between them, you would be touching, not so wide that there's no contact. If you were to slip between, go forward, Adho Mukha Virasana. Stretch your arms. Shins long, thighs long. Groins lengthening as much backward toward the buttock bone as forward toward the knee, there is just a quiet lengthening. The knee is undisturbed by the folding at the hip if the thigh lengthens back, front, and sides. The knee stays neutral as you intensify the forward bend. Send those ribs forward. Even lifting up a little bit to move, to move, allow the flesh to move. Now, 
<coughs> Stretch the arms fully, palms down. Then you come up onto the hands and knees and get it set up for Adho Mukha Svanasana. Palms flat, arms balanced inner outer lower triceps. Keep the arm pushing away from the skull. And up you go. Raising the heels. Now you have to lengthen the shin as you did in Virasana Bhattrasana. Lengthen that shin toward the feet, toward the knee. Lengthen the thigh toward the groin and toward the foot. The leg stretches. Equally, push the arms, lengthen each bone, lengthen the ribs, raise those heels, child, or lengthen your stance also, walk those feet back, child, yes, good, also gave that was helpful, open the ribs now, straighten your knees, Kathy. And media, take the leg back now. The top chest, armpit ribs, finish that job. The sides of the neck, maintain that release away from the skull. Now, release and come out. Rest there for a bit. Okay. So now <clears throat> you need a chair. Just a bare chair. And the chair is high enough, I'm hoping that your spine can be horizontal, parallel to the floor. Okay, so you get like that and make your legs vertical and your arms vertical. So some of you have a little more space. The hips are forward. Gay, move your feet forward. Just an inch. Good. That's it. No, yeah. Good. And stretch your legs. Karen, hips back over the heels. Hips back. Kathy, move your chair much closer to you. Vertical arms. Yeah, now vertical legs too. Hips back. Okay, good. That's better. Now you can put a little more space, move your chair forward, your feet back, but keep your legs vertical. Hips back now, cat. Okay, watch me for a second or two. Okay, hopefully this looks like vertical legs and my arms may be a little bit in front of my shoulders. Now I'm going to try to transform that. I have to stretch the legs and I've got to pull. You see how I'm drawing back with that leg. And if it's, if I don't stop it with anything else, I'll just keep going, right? Till I fall over. But I'm going to counter that pulling forward with my arms. My arms are actually pulling back to move my Ribs forward. Keep your legs firm and pull hard with those arms. Pull back on the chair like you're trying to act. Karen, move your hips forward. Keep them vertical or slightly behind. Now pull your trunk forward. 
So your shoulders are over straight arms, straight elbows. Use the, bring the shoulder away from the skull. You're using all of your shoulder girdle. Yes, that's better, Karen. You're using all of your shoulder girdle to pull your rib cage away from the hips. Let your abdomen muscles, spinal muscles relax so the arms and legs can do that work. Let go the abdomen, let go the navel. So you feel that inner body able to move into the length. Stretch your arms, shoulder blades down. Yes, they go into the back ribs, but their job is not to jam the chest. It's to lengthen those ribs forward. Keep pulling back through the thigh. So your weight is firm on the heel, and Amelia further back through the outer hips, inner groins, physically move those hips back away from the chest, and the chest forward, longer spine. Now, this is the work of forward bends. This is the effort of forward bends. If you let the elbows go and hang the trunk down, right, which you're welcome to do now, you're welcome to take more pose. So your head will come to the chin, your hands will go to the floor, or maybe they'll come down the chair legs move. You take support, take a more complete forward bend. Let your elbows bend. If it is very comfortable to you, hang fully down. Okay, keep your legs vertical. Vertical legs. Okay. You're leaning towards your head. There is no leaning. There is only the weight of the head on the chair. None of the weight of the trunk. Everything else goes into the floor through the feet. No head pushing. It's not sheer shasin. Now, everybody, get rid of the chair and hang your head. Hang. Uttanasana, complete. See, gay, how you wait, had to move backward. Right? That means you were leaning onto the chair. Keep the weight over the feet. Stretch your legs. Evenly into the floor. Lengthen up through those hips. Now, you don't have the use of your arms, but you have that inner body memory. See if you can coax the ribs away from the hips and let that abdomen soften and lengthen along with the spine. No pulling of spinal muscles, just extension. Now, go right back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Then you have to shift that chair. Sorry about that. Now, those I caution to take a bit longer pose, keep that memory. Make sure your pose is a bit longer so you can fully stretch. Arms and legs, heels as high as necessary, right? So, <clears throat> I was saying before, that first part of the Tanasana is the effort, the work. Hanging down, that release of the spine is what you might call the result, right? How well you can 
releasing the pose is the result of that initial effort. Keep making that initial effort here. Pull back with those thighs. Push forward through the trunk. Open up the waist. Raise the heels enough to open that middle spine. Walk your feet further back, Care. Okay, release come out. The pose actually looked better second time around for most of you, so that's good. In yoga terms, all this work here is, is the thing that you are responsible for. This is the work that you kind of, as the Bhagavad Gita would put it, this is the work that you own, that you have proprietary rights to, is this effort. Now, when you release and hang down, you might say you're the, the benefit you receive is the fruit of your effort. And what the Gita says is, this is very interesting. This part is the only part you own, your effort. The, the result is not yours. The result is the result of your efforts you make the effort. The result doesn't actually belong to you. Stand up. This is a hard thing for our culture to understand. We believe that we own. Take your chair. No, no chair at this point. Yeah, you probably need a chair. Some of you will start working with the main chair. Take that chair. Use a wall for balance if you need it. Stand up straight at first. Then put your foot on that chair sideways. Use this arm to help open this groove. Use this arm to steer the lengthening of the groin toward the knee. There is, as we saw in the Riksha Anukha Virasana, there is also a lengthening back to the hip. There's a lengthening in both directions. So you see in this side, there's a lengthening in both directions. Lengthening in both directions. Buttocks down. Okay. So then there's Rikshasana. And I suggest you come into it this way. This is my way today. Do you see? Pick up your toes, push through the heel, then catch that ankle with the same big flexion and push your heel in first and keep the heel your focus until that foot's in a good position and it's the whole foot. The groin does the same, the thigh does the same thing, lengthening in both directions, coming into the hip socket, going out toward the knee, standing down on the floor, lifting up through the trunk. Come out. Change sides. 
people with knee issues, you always can take what we call a knee rope, which could be a washcloth, it could be a formal rope, it could be a strap, it's something to create space in the knee. This is like a starter pose that everybody can do. But when you get to Vrikshasana, it may be that you need a knee rope, a spacer, to keep that knee comfortable. Be prepared. Start your first pose. Keep this foot properly done. Your right foot is in line with the left heel, left back arch. Do you see that? alignment of my feet. A little foot forward. When the hips are stiff, you'll want them more like this with the toe. So your foot will be forward on the chair instead of back in line with the heel. So watch what you're giving yourself and then work there. Spread. Two directions. If it puts pressure on the knee, open the pose up more. Lift in all dimensions. Up, down, left, right. Then, with or without your knee support, it's hard to do. All the faces, so I had to come up like that, then flex, then push through that heel, and bring the heel in close, and lay that foot down on the inseam of the thigh, vertical. Keep pushing the heel. Now lengthen your vertical, and lengthen your lateral. See what I'm saying? It's because of standing posts. Lots of points. Okay. And now, now, <clears throat> the next part, you may well take your kids to a walk uh, uh, close to a wall. So if this is the wall, I'm very close to it, so I'll just sit and rest. I'm that far away from a wall. Okay? Pretty close. Here's what happens. The foot comes from rickshaws and it comes way up. So this heel lifts as high up the straight leg as you can bring it. And then it comes over as high up as you can bring it. And if it doesn't go very far, you put a strap around it. If you can hold with your hand, hold it, and then go toward what looks like for chasana by lengthening, 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 lengthening. Come away from the wall if you're able and stand straighter through the standing leg. Keep this foot up high as long as the knee permits. Now, if the knee, per are you doing some of you are, are just in Vrikshasana, and I accept if this is your ending pose, that is fine. This looks good, those I see. Now you face forward and pull up straighter and straighter. Some of you have a little tilt in the trunk and its origin is in the pelvis. And Gay Gilroy, you need to turn that foot vertically down the inseam of the thigh. 
that is primary hip work. Turn that foot. Turn those toes back. And out you come, everybody, slowly, one thing at a time. Standing on two feet. So instead of rickshasana, we're going to raise that heel. And again, if you need knee protection, now's the time. Because this is where the pose builds in intensity. Pull that heel as high as you can. And also, if there's any problem and something stops you, okay, it shows you just do rickshasana. This is my challenge knee, as you know. So I'm bringing the heel up high. I'm sensing through the leg. I'm following my rules. That thigh has to lengthen. And I'm pulling my foot away from the knee as much. Do you see this? I'm pulling length between hip and knee and between foot and knee. And that's what allows me to keep things open. And I don't know if you've got your short-term memories working here, but my other foot was higher. It's just because this hip is tighter, so I'm accommodating it. Do not re-injure yourself. That standing leg has to come back. When it comes back and up, that lifted leg can come down somewhat. Okay, out one thing at a time. Okay, was that both sides? One side, two sides. You need side two. It was both sides. Ah, we need yeah. we need other we need other side. Oh, somebody needs the other side. Yeah, take the other side. Raise that heel up high. Some of you were doing both sides. Some of you did one. Get both sides. Those who did both sides, please repeat. Repetition is a lovely thing. Pull out the length of that shin. Let go of the length of the thigh. Stay tall as you can be through that standing leg. Thigh back, heel pushing down. In your foot pushing down. Point that foot straight down, that in foot on the Vrikshasana thigh if you're doing that pose. Time for side two if you're doing the repetition. Good. Keep lifting Chaya through the side ribs. Equal, equal. There's a slight tilt. Uh, uh, Almost, it's both sides. You slightly tilt your shoulders to your left. So be careful of that. Look at the length on the left side of the waist and ribs. Don't hoist your shoulder. It's not a shoulder problem. It's this trunk. Mm -hmm. This hip, this trunk. That's better. Okay. Are you ready? Out. That is a difficult pose. A strap around your waist. So it holds on to your 
waist and hangs in front if you, as a matter of fact, Do this near a wall so it's very easy to get your balance. Your foot should be perhaps one foot away from the wall so you can see me on this wall here. I'm a bit away from the wall. This means when I get into the pose, I'm going to be able to bend forward without clocking against the wall. You have to be far enough from the wall that when you fall forward, it won't be an issue. Now, feel free to bring your chair in. Unless you are happy to go to the floor and take a more complete pose, that is very fine with me. As freely as you wish to balance, please do. So I'm asking for you to be hands free. Now, come into that pose uh, on the right side and be upright for a bit. And you know you can always tighten the strap as you may need to. So look, press this foot. Here it is from the side. Press that foot against the thigh. That is causing you to lengthen from the knee to the big toe. Lengthen that shin, pressing your thigh. Lengthen the thigh. And then my chair should be in front of me, but not now. I'll move it. And then with that pressure, don't relinquish it. With that pressure, can you fold forward? You must keep the legs under control. Stretch both legs. Now, thighs back, your bent leg, padmasana leg, is pushing the straight leg. Both hips go back, and you pull your trunk forward. This is your work. Lengthen, that's fine. Extend both legs. Push that outer foot against the top thigh. So you stretch the inner shin. I see you, Phyllis. Is it knee pain or are you otherwise just fine? Hip pain? Okay, I can't hear you, but. Yeah, we are, uh, yeah, I am fine. I am fine. Okay, Chai is good. Phyllis, fine? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little good. knee pain. Just a little what? Gimpy? <laughs> okay. So please, if you watch those hips, I'm going to ask you to stand up. That means you've got to stretch your legs, strengthen your legs more, and make your outer hips compact as you bring your trunk up. You have to be very firm in the hips. And if you can't do it, the knee bends. The standing knee bends and you come up. Unhook your foot, stand up um, two legs straight. Be there for a few moments so the two legs even out.
side two. Chair, however you want it. Make it so that when you bend forward, the wall is not too close. Your hips will rock back just to counterbalance the trunk. You can't and shouldn't avoid that. You don't indulge it, but you don't avoid it. So if you go in, you go to side two, you may see tightening the strap only as much as helps you. Don't hinder. Now you begin lengthening so you can apply pressure of that foot. And in so doing, lengthen the chin, lengthen the thigh, open that pelvis, pull up taller through the standing side, and release more through the padmasana side. So this is called Arda Bada. In this case, it's bound or bada by a strap. Usually, it'll be your back, your hand catching that big toe. And you come forward, press with this foot, press with that foot, lengthen that thigh, bring your hand through your chair. Anybody who wants to from going forward on that chair, you can go lower so long as you keep that length. That is your work. What you gain from it is being able to go down without increasing suffering. But you can't demand to go down without suffering. <laughs> That's not your right. Your right is to, the thing you own is the work that gets you open enough to do the pose. Now, time to come up. And out all the way. So when the the result of the pose, the good part of the pose, the release of that forward bend is not available to you, you can't be upset about that. You just go back to the work that is needed. That is all. I have a question, Devin. Yeah. On the, on the standing leg. Yes. On the standing leg, um, I get into it, da, 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 da. But as soon as I start to go over, even before my tibia starts to bow out to the side. You gotta watch your foot. Uh-huh. If your tibia is going to the side, yeah, stay on the inner foot. Yeah, your hip is going to move, but don't lose the inner foot. That don't actually, if you keep your inner foot, if you lose your inner foot, you can really slosh. If you keep your inner foot, and this is my funny foot too. If you keep your inner foot stretching forward, this upper hip has to stay in. You can't slosh. Oh, yeah. You so inner foot going forward. Even going forward. Inner Just foot going forward. This big, this big toe, this yeah. inner foot. Yeah. Uh, while it's standing on the floor, has uh -huh. to be on the floor, and this big toe has to be pushing forward. 
Okay. Me, me lengthen the metatarsal. Okay. And in, in order to lengthen that metatarsal, you, I mean, go ahead, try it. Be in, some of you are probably doing it in your Rikshasana, any pose you like. Here in Kutrasana 3. <laughs> Stay on the big toe. Push on it. And make a connection between this outer hip and that big toe. Okay. Oh, it gets more difficult as you go forward, yeah. Well, Yes, only because there's a counterbalance. The hip socket has to widen. But you can stay on the big toe. Even in Vrikshasana. Okay, to be worked on. Thank you. Worked on. You see the potential. Yes. It's got potential. It definitely does. <laughs> All right. Now, Anamukha Shanasana. Back to, oh, let's do Prasarita Padutanasana. Legs apart. And just be upright. Thighs back. So, here, either the big toe stays on the floor or it rolls. Go down the floor, stretch your big toe forward. At the same time, push your outer heel down. Outer heel down. Big toe base joint down and long. Spread all your other toes out. Make them long. The more you can stretch down and extend through those toes, the better you can stand on the whole leg, including from the pelvis down, from the brain down. Shoulders back. Front spine up. Keep those feet firm. Inner foot, don't roll. Go forward to bricks of the floor. Now, your ownership in this pose is of the work to create evenness and extension. Pull on that floor. Hands on bricks or not. Draw your spine forward. Release the abdomen in the midst of this leg so that you can exhale and inhale and the muscles just spread. Now with the exhalation, release the spine down. Keep the legs working. You still own that part. You still own the arms working to help keep away from the skull. Soft spine. Those who are able to bring the head to the floor, please do. If it if it is not possible without a fight, then the fighting is done with the arms and legs. So you would take your hands to your ankles and wide the elbows and keep the shoulders away from the skull. Keep the weight vertically or rip the heels so the weight is standing to the heels, and as you bend your elbows, your spine is drawn toward the floor. 
and toward the floor, kind of between your feet. And you receive this with the spine of your nervous system. So when your brain is not acting with grief or frustration or anger, it's just receiving. Now, release the arms. Bring the hands to the floor. And if you need to, if your feet closer together, go right ahead. And then inhale. Come up. Otherwise, keep your legs strong. Hips firm. Up. Come. Now, have a seat. So, cameras may shift if necessary. So, that see the floor. I see you on the floor. Tilt my camera down a bit so you can see all my sticky mat. Get a strap. Get a brick. It can be, a, you need two bricks, I should say. Two bricks, they can be of any sort. They just need to have basically brick-like qualities. Some height. That's what bricks do, they give height and they give support. Now, you're gonna go back to the Ross, but you're gonna go into it the classical way which is to say, I'm doing it with support. And that support goes, by the way, I see it between my heels, between those ankle bones, because that's where my buttocks are going to be sitting. Now the knees are together. And if you need a knee rope, now is the time. And take your calves and smoosh them flat and level and draw them away from the knee gently and sit with space in the knee. And you straighten your toes. So all ten of them as best you can manage, point straight back. So you're doing a careful virasana. Making sure that shin is properly arranged. So, and when you sit, if you see this, this actually is a nice illustration. You can see this is at a small angle. It's not parallel to the floor. So if I were to turn my shin bone, tucking this outer shin down and moving that outer shin bone in, can you see how that changes the knee joint a bit? A bit. It's actually doing well. When the knee is feeling really cranky, it's like this. So this is an improvement, turning it toward level knees. Okay. Get that spare brick, second brick. You want to put it behind you and do it with your right hand and just bring it to a place that's comfy for you, okay? Then sit. Take your arms down, fingertips on the floor. Push on that floor, all 10 fingertips. Stretch all 10 toes. Reflect that stretch back into the groove and stretch your spine up, now take your arms, turn them, and lift them up. Use your arms to pull your trunk up. 
pull your ribs away from your hips. Relax the breath, make sure you interact with exhalation and inhalation. Stretch those arms. Keep your feet stretching in the buttocks down. Now, left arm up, right arm goes down behind you. It either catches this brick or it catches your left side, big toe. Stretch your arm up and bring it to that top top. So if your hands on the brick, you push on that brick to lift your trunk. Pull on your knee to lift your trunk. Use your arms. Give a height. Stretch your legs. Keep the hips equal. You only turn when you feel it is like a, a, a gift. It's something that this work frees up for you. release come out. The twist, you might say, you don't have any ownership of. All you own is the effort to go into this pose. I hope that makes sense. Make these efforts part of me. When you go. Pause. <laughs> take, <laughs> take your arms out. Take your arms Feel free to interlock those fingers. Take the second crossing, go up, go up, pull up. Get your ribs off your hips. Breathe, exhaling and inhaling. Stretch your feet. Release those groins now. Left arm either goes to the brick if that's where it can go. It goes to catch the right big toe. The other right arm way up, both feet stretching, both groins stretching. Lift your spine. The left shoulder can roll back as it is free to. Then you cross over, right hand to left knee. Pull with your arms to move your trunk away from the hips. Stretch your legs to keep your hips down. The turn is a gift. The rotation is a gift of the effort of the body, the mind, and the breath. Come out. Sit like that. Then, right leg, hold the ankle, pick the foot up on the floor. This is simply a complicated pose. I mean, more so than the other one. The legs are doing two different things. The groins are doing, how the heck are you going to get this thigh longer? <laughs> it feels short, doesn't it? It feels like compacted a little bit. So lengthen your shin upward a bit. Go up on the ship and sit down with that book. I hope that helps. Lengthen for the crown. And that lengthening toward the crown can give you some lift. So it's always the same story, right, with these legs. They have to be able to lengthen and when you when you somehow stop the lightning, that's when everything else gets blocked. 
to keep the way like this. All right, fold it back up, change legs, same thing, side two. You may discover the groins <laughs> are different. Keep that heel, by the way, tucked in close, as close as the knee permits. So you're putting the squeeze on that hip a little bit. And hands free, see what you get. This is kind of helping the trunk, but not the leg. Pushing to the heel helps the leg. So you get both those going. And then see what happens when you add that stretch of the shin on the hip that is more problematic. The effect of this support will be more noticeable. Okay. This time. Stretch the leg straight. So even if you don't have a knee rope, to stretch the leg, hold behind the knee, right on the thigh side of the knee joint, both inner and outer, and pull to lengthen the chin away from the hip. Stretch the leg. Anybody with a hyperextended knee that does not go in, too much, it feels vulnerable. You can take, I have this convenient thick knot in the rope, and I can put that just at my top shin. So I can push as much as I like, and the knee's not going to hyperextend. So you could do that with the edge of the blanket in the right spot to protect a hyperextended knee. Otherwise, stretch your leg. You know what I mean by stretch your leg. That means that Vyamatsu leg has to stretch back to the toe, forward to the knee, and the thigh lengthens. And the ability to stretch that shin forward is giving you some uh, release in your groin. Sit big hips down. Take your arms down. You might need a strap. You might, depending on your flexibility, need a chair. Watch this. You'll recognize what's going on. The stage is always the leg stretch. Always you come up. You can even look up. Then you take your hands to the chair. If you're flexible, you take your hands to your foot. Don't use to strap it first. You either go to your foot or you go to the chair. Okay. And from there, the stages are the same. You lift that trunk up. Lift and lift the trunk up. Then you go forward. Lift your trunk away from the legs. Go forward, lift your trunk with the legs. Now you can catch your foot, right? You go by those stages of the effort, and at the end, you keep the arms and legs working and let that spine go as low as you go. Okay, some of you are beginning. It's fine, take the stages. Everybody should use a chair for at least step one, especially, not especially, but I suggested for Amelia, just because of that upper chest work that always needs doing. This is going to help your sense of symmetry and evenness. Use your arms. Use your legs. You go forward by stages. At a certain point, it's more to your advantage to take your foot instead of staying on the chair. But keep lengthening 
And at the end, go ahead and accept the fruit with your spine and in your body. Exhale, you come forward. Take the head down. Maybe it lands on support. The arms and legs remain strong. But that in your body takes all the quietness that this pose can offer. yourself focused. Don't lose your target. Now prepare to come up. And then come up. Stretch both legs. Take both legs out of Virasana, the Dantasana, so you get a little break. Then you get to go back into here you are taking your little break. Clear that knee. Then when he's clear, you go back into both legs, be rust, both shins, both ankles, both all ten toes, all of that, and then you come out of it the same way. To move into the second side. So you begin with Viras and stretch the whole nine yards of leg. And release them the chest. So even here, the arms and legs are working, the arms are pushing down to help scoop that chest up. Then the arms draw up to scoop the chest up. Keep your hips down, keep that view up. So the shin stretching, that's your only hope to keep that view up to the butt down. And you come forward to your chair seat and press down from the shoulder girdle to lift your trunk. Keep your legs stretched. Go forward. The breath is receiving this. Don't squeeze with your breath. Go any amount forward you can on the chair and then catch your foot and keep going with interacting with the foot which helps you use that leg better. Push with the leg, pull with the arms, lengthen that waist, and then exhaling, go into the full pose. The brain and spine quietly take that pose. Maintain your focus. Don't get all, you might say, caught up in just the resting part of this pose. Maintain the essential effort. You are, after all, still in that pose. So, body, mind, breath, stay in Carefully prepare. Inhale, come up. Maintain your focus. And stretch both legs. And you could come 
flat front to the floor if you like. Um, that will give you a straight edge with the end switch to straighten the leg. And that's kind of comfortable for everybody. So you don't change poses, you don't go to the next pose until that knee is fully open to the floor. So if this is the back of the knee, there's the lower corners of the back of the knee and the upper corners. So this knee is a square shape. And in some of you, that square shape is a little bent. And it needs to open so that when you're on the floor, this back of the knee is square on the floor. You feel the whole back of the knee pressing that floor. Not just the inner, not just the outer, but if you're going to have a preference, push the outer. You're going to start somewhere, start with that outer knee. Mostly, honestly, what we feel is that band of, of thickness. There's a, a roll of skin on the inner knee, then a dimple, then a, a thick part that traverses the knee, and then this little outer knee. Mostly what we feel is this central part. That's fine. Make sure you're on the outer part of that center. You don't have to put this skin on the floor unless that's the shape of your knee, but you've got to get in that center of the knee. Make sure that the outer is down and then add the inner. Okay. So you do this to protect the knee for whatever comes and whatever can you so now it's time for, we only have a few minutes, but we need a Chatushpadasana Setuban, so we need some kind of um, shoulder stand action. So more grip, if your hips are tender, two bricks, so you can get like a big square standing platform that's very broad across the back of the pelvis. People with sacral heat problems might prefer this two-brick thing. Also, if you are very stiff and those hips don't really come up high enough for a brick to fit under, then what you do is you put height under your shoulders. That makes it so that that makes it so it's easier for the hips to get up as high as a brick, much easier. And it still allows you to open your chest. This is worth much more than. this much more valuable okay, in its effect. So raise those shoulders if that brick can't stand upright. Raise your shoulders on blankets. And it's got to be something again that you can uh, tolerate that when you use the arms and legs correctly, there is something you might think of as a benefit, <laughs> something that feels like a benefit. It should not feel like another form of hip pain. 
that page and then pen make your throat soft. There's the back of the throat, back structure of that neck, and we call it the neck. And the front structure we call it the throat. And it's this it's the same thing in two surfaces. It also has a left side and right side, which absolutely is important to feel and consider as the throat side and the back of the neck. Back of the neck is kind of spine, spinal muscles, and that compartment. The throat in front is more of the air passage, food passage, circulation passage. The sides can be thought of more as the nervous system passage. And I say this, even though you might say, well, the spine is the nervous system passage. In the middle, yes, it is. But all those nerve bundles in the spine connect to the body going out the side. So all the nerves responsible for sending information, receiving information from anywhere in the body are doing that work. Their pathway is out the sides of this body from that central passageway. So you must consider the side that is the access to everything. And it's true in the neck, everywhere, chest, abdomen, pelvis. So this, this is another way of thinking of that instruction. The arms and legs extend away from the skull, through the spinal cord, and away from the spine itself, out the sides. your knees, press with the arms and feet, raise the hips, remove the grip, lengthen your spine. Stretch your legs as you wish to. You can give support. Technically, 915 class is over. I'm going to sit here for a few minutes just saying. See that your skin reflects that nervous system. See the skin of the spine is not bunched. See that it's not bunched vertically or laterally, nor is it overstretched.
Now, I'm going to end this class because another one needs to begin for the yoga tree and with me. So I will say namaskar. You don't have to say it back. Thank you. See you next time.